So we're live, we're recording. Clearly not here yet. That's right. Uh, hey, also Sante. Ah, okay. So I got a message from uh, Matthew. He says, unfortunately, I have a class with other meeting today. I will try to join them. That is done. So do we want to keep pushing uh, the uh, requirements in front of us until we actually get to the point where Matthew joins us or until we are? I think it would be better as we're both sort of equally working on it and uh, and Matthew's the lead author. So why okay. don't you deal with as much other stuff as you can and hopefully he'll join us before we need to get need to, to address that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So just a note that we are recording now. All right. Uh, so the first item we have is a status report. Um, I guess um, most of the items that are, that are work in progress are on the agenda, um, Loa. So um, I, I don't know uh, what, what, what things you wanted to track, I mean, in terms of status, besides the ones that we are, we have on the agenda. Uh, the, the only question I have is, is it, are there anything on the AP list that is not covered here? Yeah, I, I, I will switch to the second item. Yeah. So, okay. I think. No, I actually, the, so understand me correctly. Yeah. Uh, back, back up again. There are only three items on the agenda. And like a plethora of uh, sub items. Ah, number yeah. one, is, okay. Number one is one item, and then there are sub items all the way down to yeah. Uh, I see. And, and, uh, okay. Okay, these are sub items. Okay, right. So uh, we will jump to the action items, or action points, uh, as you like to call them. Um, um, so the first was, uh, you know, is on the agenda, and we will, uh, you will come to it. And we'll push it out as you suggested. The uh, requirements draft uh, addressing some comments that we uh, logged already. Um, and the second, uh, we uh, last time we met, uh, we actually did, the Kriti had uh, talked a little bit about the policy to put data in stack versus uh, post stack, and. Um, there were some follow-ups needed in terms of documenting uh, what was presented uh, in in a draft and possibly make it uh, make its way to the requirements document. So, um, um, if Kiriti is uh, is present, he can give an update if any in, on any of this changed. Uh, um, no, nothing changed. Um... I am working on the next version of the of the draft, so in that um, it will be there. Okay. Do you have an uh, ETA on that? Yeah, actually, I was going to get it by today, but uh, since we're doing this, um, just a high level report, um, I'll probably get it in before next week. Okay. We're talking about the 13th. 13th, yeah. Okay. Um, so we have an item that is, um, you know, I noticed that, uh, you know, there's a thread on our mailing list. Uh, it's ongoing thread. It discusses the, uh, the efficacy or the utility of the action flags or the action indicators. Um, there are other names also being used, but um, the utility of those and, you know, and we did ask, uh, you know, all the vendors but participating to pitch in and, uh, you know, have a say in terms of uh, 
visibility. And that's an open action item. And we wanted to document that in a wiki. Um, so there are certain opinions already out there. Uh, so I can uh, compose those into a wiki, but anyone wants to add and comment on this item. So I'm talking about this one here. So that uh, maybe I gather more. So. Yeah, um, I, I think we need to understand what we want to achieve with that. Because on the one hand, um, we have done some analysis to to understand the value of these things. But uh, on the other hand, you know, not everyone is willing to share all the details of their chips. Um, you know, so we have to balance between getting the right information and uh, keeping the level of confidentiality that we need. Okay. Um, anyone else wants to add? Okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, that, that's, that's right. I think uh, uh, we do need to provide detailed analysis um, uh, whatever design uh, we have, um, rather than just to provide some uh, uh, qualitative uh, claims on that we we better give uh, um, um, you know some um, detailed analysis um, uh, yeah I believe even even though uh, we might not uh, get the uh, detailed design from vendors but that some uh, basic uh, um, principles applied how to implement that um, because uh, um, that, that, that's no other ways because all the information there is, uh, you know, is uh, used for uh, passing and uh, processing the information. So uh, there are some uh, basic procedures on that. So we need a, a detailed analysis on that. Um, I I already have some uh, in, input. Maybe uh, next time or. You know, uh, whenever we have a available slots, I can give a presentation on that. Okay, I'll add that as a note. Uh, thank you, are you? Okay, uh, I'll move on to the next action item. Um, so we have some text that we wanted to get consensus on. Uh, the last we had is we will add this discussion again on the on the agenda, but I guess it's not on the agenda today. So we will assess if we can fit it in. Um, that's uh, that's still an open uh, open uh, action item. Okay. Um, the next I action item I have is uh, so there was a discussion about a standardized uh, uh, ADI or indicator function indicators uh, or action indicators, and there were user defined action data indicators. So. We had a uh, an action item to uh, sync up on, you know, how these user defined uh, 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 function indicators or action indicators uh, um, are exchanged between nodes in the network. Is it LSP scope? Is it network scope? Um, 
and um, you know how do we ensure that they are consistent? The meaning of those uh, indicators is consistent uh, within that scope. And uh, honestly, we met uh, Kriti and myself. We talked a little bit about it. Uh, um, yeah, so it's uh, if, if it's still something that um, you know we think is of interest for to the design team, we can we can present some. Uh, Proposal on that. Do you agree, Crediti, or uh, um, do you want to add something on top of what I said? No, I agree with you. Um, I think one of the things that um, one of the things I'm working on is how to um, communicate capabilities, uh, and typically we use IGP for that. So from that point of view, um, it's probably the thing that um, if we use the same mechanism for communicating uh, policy-based stuff, then it would be IGP domain. Um, but other, uh, like, like it says here, other options are possible, but you have to find the mechanism for doing it that way. So um, if you use, for example, a PC controller or, or some, um, you know, SDN like controller, then, then many things are possible, but typically we don't standardize those things. Okay. Thank you. Um, I'll move on. Um, we have an action item open for a while now. Uh, it was to discuss, uh, do we need uh, ancillary data for uh, SFC and OAM use cases or, um, so is that, uh, are those use cases uh, uh, part of the MIAD, um, you know, uh, indicators and ancillary data or they, they don't need this support I guess there was uh, a discussion about the gas gash processing and how it interacts with uh, with our design. And, um, is, is if Greg is on the call, he can provide. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I I think that for now this discussion is uh, set aside. I still believe that we do have a case, and as uh, Okay, uh, first, uh, I have not heard uh, arguments saying that uh, we don't need an uh, OEM capability for um, the mechanism described in RFC 8595. Um, so to do uh, OEM to avoid uh, OEM packets being passed to uh, service functions be on the SFP OEM. Um, so doing it in uh, with a gal uh, breaks uh, some, I understand, implementations that uh, expect gal to be only at the bottom of the stack. So I believe that when we arrive at uh, some solutions or more firm solutions, uh with um uh psd indication so that just need to look at how it uh, uh addresses uh the needs of rfc 8595 so i i would like to try to keep it as not a separate case but just uh the case covered by um psd Okay, thank you. Greg. Any questions, any comments? Any questions? Okay, thank you. Thanks. Uh, the last item is uh, with regards to the requirements document uh, that Matthew and Stewart. So we, we wanted to have a wiki where we can uh, um, Point to, uh, in fact, we have a wiki, uh, it's a GitHub um, page 
I, it's not a wiki. It's a GitHub. It's uploaded there, and we have some comments already. Um, I'm not sure um, if you are using that, uh, but I do recommend that we use it. Uh, I think we've been sort of following the more traditional approach, but um, I th didn't. Isn't there a pointer to the draft in the wiki? Isn't that how we did it? Uh, there is no wiki. Uh, oh, there might be a pointer to the draft. I think that's how we've decided to do it. Yeah, but the uh, yeah, uh, indeed, Stuart, that's right. But you know, to add comments or you know, if anyone wants to review and log comments in line, I mean. That was one uh, reasoning, and probably. Uh, how... What Stuart is saying that we have done it for twenty years without the guitar, and this is not that really that complicated. So we can take a discussion under that. Yeah, I, I, that, uh, well, the action item was not generated by me, <laughs> but uh, I, I thought it came out as an idea. That's so. Um, sorry, just to address what Loa said, um, I think that yes, we've done this this way for twenty years. I also was writing drafts using NROF, which is so painful. And when XML came, I moved to XML. When um, Mark cram down came i moved to cram down so i don't think that the fact that we've been doing it this way for 20 years means we do not use modern tools that are available i think using git really makes it much easier to have comments to follow comments to be able to say yeah we'll resolve this we won't uh, address this for now or we won't address this at all i i, I think it's helpful and um, I have been planning to put my own um, <clears throat> drafts on Git. I haven't done it yet, but I, I do think that's a valuable thing to do. So um, I would say um, we should at least try that. I'll discuss with my co-author when he either appears online or um, shortly. Thanks. And. Um, like I said, I'll I'll put mine as well. So I think it's easier to, to is there share a git, things. Is there a Git we're using? I mean, I I I I use yeah. my drafts on my personal Git, but is there some place that we're using for this? Yes, uh, yes, uh, Stewart. There is yeah. an MPLS working group Git GitHub okay. account, and uh, in the in fact, your your the requirements draft is already uh, in there. In there, yes. And the, okay. there were comments added. We were going over those comments. Uh, last year sometime in december all right okay we'll see what we can do okay that was the last action item i have um i'll uh, just save this and go back to the, the agenda uh, um okay so we have okay let's just make sure that yeah, it looks, yeah, there are versions of this. Uh, okay, so uh, we have a charter. Okay, that's, yeah, on, that, that's on me. Uh, I guess it's empty. It's empty, okay. Yeah, uh, and a uh, long time ago, we actually decided that we wanted to do a charter, and I looked at it, and uh, uh, what I came up with to put in there was was not not very much not very much substance in it. Uh, so my question is, uh, do we want to keep it? If we don't want to keep it, we just take it out. Or if we want to keep it, uh, we try to put some more uh, so, some more substance in in the shorter. I thought the text that we were discussing uh, it closely resembles the charter. Uh, what do you think? The uh, the what was it called? Uh, the text for uh, um, uh, 
yeah, I, I don't have the pointer to it, but uh, do, do you mean the directives or the directives, yeah, the directives? Yeah. Uh, I, um, yeah. Do you think that could be a, a, those are in some way too specific and too out of context for a charter? Um, I think the charter is something a person with only a some knowledge of what's going on can read and understand more what's, what, what we're doing. It's a little bit like an abstract. Um, but uh, Tarek, dump what you have in there and I can look at it and see what I want to add and change. And then we take it up again in a couple yeah. of meetings. Yeah, we, we need to discuss the directives text. I mean, I, yeah, I, we, I, we can, uh, we can consider that. Sure. Okay. It's not my text though. Um, so the documents, uh, that you have listed here, they start by the primer by steward. Uh, so steward, do you want to talk a little bit about what? what is this primer and why was it put together and well i i originally started the primer as a um a basically a checkpoint on um what the background of mpls was uh so that everyone had a common sort of view and i also discussed some of the various um um new proposals for it um so that uh, people could understand um what was being proposed within the context of um 20 years of sort of mpls design um i am um, i i and I wasn't sure originally whether I whether it would ever be a working group document or anything, um, but people would seem to like the idea that it's a working group document. And but we do need to decide um, whether it's a live document that discusses all of the new proposals, or whether it is a document that just discusses the platform uh, on the context in which the adopted new pro proposals need to to operate. So we need to decide whether. It is to continue to be, uh, as I say, live with all the new work, or whether I should um, set a point in time and um, just make that the the context. So I, I'd be interested in input from everyone else on um, what they think the purpose of this is. I have a comment, Stuart. Maybe uh, uh, yes. you know it's related related to the question you're asking. So um, I understand you. You know there is a kind of a review of literature or a look to the past, and uh, a, a a possible look to the future or future use cases and future proposals. And for the latter, the look ahead uh, on future proposals, we wanted to cover those in the use cases document, and we actually started to. Uh, Cover those in uh, you know it's upcoming bullet. Um, I you know I would be happy to you know take text from from the primer and you know make it there and give you credit for that. But we what do you think? Uh, I, you know I would not like to see two contradicting. Uh, oh, indeed, indeed, and I'm quite worried about it being a. I mean, it, it, it would be a never finished document if it talks about the future. So I'm happy. Um, if um, it just provides a, and it's a much simpler task, if it just provides the background in terms of what MPLS is today so that everyone um, has a place they can go to and, um, um, and understand it. I mean, I particularly note, for example, the IESG has got very little clue about what MPLS is and asks all kinds of silly questions in um, in reviews. So it's quite a, a, a useful to write down um, what MPLS is today and how it works um, as a you know, as a you know, sort of single sort of place to go and look uh, and, and find other work as opposed to um, you know restating everything that's uh, in the primary documents. So. Um, I can sort of set a timeline 
uh, from which the requirements, then, then the requirements can use that as a platform for what it's like and then describe uh, where we need to go. That would probably be quite a good uh, division of work. That's great. Okay with that. I'm going to refresh the document. I think it's about to. Sorry, sorry, Kieran. Yeah, uh, so I actually like that this document is a standalone primer. It will be very valuable on its own. What we could do is that uh, once with the primer, we could have some kind of problem statement that will attach it to the requirements document. But uh, as Tariq suggested, I'm not sure if merging it with use cases is a good idea. No, that wasn't the plan. I think the plan would be that use cases um, sorry, is, you, is that use cases and requirements refer back to it. Yeah. So that they say, this is MPLS as, as before we started this project. Um, these are the use cases and requirements going forward. Uh, and then from that, we build the, the technology. Yeah, that makes sense. Makes sense. I'm in agreement as well. Okay, that's what we do. Okay, great. Um, I will, uh, I'm, I'm not sure if I saw Matthew joining in. I, I think I saw his name pop up. Is that correct? Uh, not on the list. Not on the list. Oh, should be fun. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Just, just yeah, here. Yeah, here. Okay. So, um, your, uh, your turn now on the agenda has come up. Uh, so Stuart and Matthew, do you want to still, uh, do you want to go ahead or do you want me to push it down in the agenda? Uh, uh, up to you. Well, we, we haven't done any, so, so I've been away until today, so I uh, haven't made any progress since the last meeting, but Stuart, we need to get together and, and consolidate the, the, the comments we have on this, I think, and uh, um, re re refresh the draft. Yep, I agree with you. But I, I think the two of us need to 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 do some work on it. You probably heard the other thing about using um, the primer as a platform for what the world is like, um, and, but and 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 taking out the work from the primer about the future, and then using requirements and use cases to to, to say this is what it was like, and um, requirements would build on that. Yeah. Okay, so um, we'll have a private discussion about when to get to to together. Uh, my diary is relatively open. Yeah, yeah, I'm I, I'm pretty flexible for the next couple of weeks. Um, okay, okay, we'll have a private discussion on when to when when to get together. Yeah, one one question to both of you: Do you want to update next week on this? Do you want this item to be on the agenda next week? Uh, no, I. From my perspective, and Stuart, I'm not sure if you have an opinion on it, but I think it's probably too soon. Too soon? Okay. Too soon, yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. All right. Uh, the next item we have is about the uh, action data indicator modeling uh, from LOA. Um, I know that yeah. you put a, a wiki. Uh, do you want me to pull it up? You can, you can put up the wiki. So, so can I ask a question here? Are you going to also write a framework document? Ah, the, because it probably does okay, need to be a framework do, document uh, at some I can, stage. I can, I can do both. Uh, let's see, where do I have it? I am presenting the the wiki. You are, and I've lost it somewhere. I open too many pages. That one. Ah, there. Uh, let's see. So, uh, the question about framework is that long time ago I had an idea what to do and then uh, I started to look at the uh, requirements and uh, I was afraid that we would create quite a bit of overlap so I took framework, framework back to zero and what I did look at was um, how we could actually model uh, 
the indicators and the different factor data into a coherent uh, context that we, we use. So one bit of warning, uh, I'm not proposing a terminology in this realm. Uh, what I'm doing is actually looking at the different aspects of uh, indicators. So, um, and I'm kind of picking what I found in the wiki. You can go down uh, onto the first picture of the starting points. Yeah, there. So this is what we have when we start. Uh, we have a label stack entry that we can remodel in some way. Uh, I don't think that we have a uh, mandate to create a label stack entries that does not include a label. Uh, but we can discuss that also. So we have a bit 20 to 31 minus the yes bit to use for uh, indicators. Um, I think it's well demonstrated that we have indicators that point to two different types of actions that depend on two different types of uh, data. That is uh, the ISD plus the non-data. I think we can do them as a bunch. And that's uh, the PSD. Uh, and the rest of the document uh, should be uh, possible to read. And uh, where uh, I discuss, I add one aspect at a time and actually come up with a, a proposal, uh, not a proposal, I've come up with a kind of a conclusion at the end. Uh, since this is a report, a stated report, I don't want to take a longer discussion here, but I'm willing to take questions. or people tell me to do, do something else. So um, one, um, one thing that I want to say is that the extension field as I had uh, visualized it, um, reuses all, well, 31 bits from the next uh, label stack entry to be flags. So instead of getting only, you know, 10 or 11 more flags, you actually would get um, 20, um, you know, 31. So, yeah, the way that the extension bit uh, looks in, in how you described it is different from how I've described it, which is once you put down the base uh, special purpose label, um, and it doesn't have to be a base special purpose label, but in general, once you put down that uh, special purpose label, um, you have an extension uh, bit that says the next entire label stack entry minus of course the uh, end of stack bit so that's how you get 31 or maybe 30 bits because that uh, extension field will uh, extension flag will continue <clears throat> so um so you essentially get uh, 30 bits uh instead of um re you know putting the the base special purpose label again and the value of that is that um, instead of taking five or four um, special purpose labels to get to 40 bits, you can do that in two uh, LSEs. Um, so I, I don't see the value in repeating the entire base special purpose label. So uh, again, if, if people want to put that as an alternative, but that was the original thought of um, how to do extensions. Can we, um, can we take an offline discussion on that? I'm kind of attracted to it, but I'm also concerned about the 3032 that says that uh, we have a label in any label stack app. Um, it depends what you mean by a label, because if you look at an entropy label, it's not a label really. It's a value to, you know, to hash on. So, um, it kind of go, goes to the remark that 
um, that we spoke about in, in requirements to do with you could only interpret a label in the context of the previous label. And that's exactly yeah. what you're saying. Yes, yes. You, and, and, and that's true for MPLS. You can only interpret something on the basis of what you're, the context you've got to get to the point where you're looking at it. Right. And, and so from that point of view, the base special purpose label, the first one sets the context and then the extension bits, which I flip, by the way, just to be consistent with the rest of MPLS. Instead of having a, sort of a continuation bit that says one until it's uh, done and then zero, um, the end of the end of stack bit basically says it's zero until it goes to one. But I mean that's a small detail. The point is uh, to Stuart's point, um, the base special purpose label sets the context, and then as long as the extension bit uh, says that this continues, that's all the continuation. And then the the you know when you flip the bit and say I'm done, that whole thing becomes sort of the extended or expanded base special purpose label with all so the flags. So why did you flip the bit, Kariti? I mean, everyone's expecting it to be the other way. Is there a good reason for doing it? Um, because that's how end of stack works. So oh, right, right, well, big part, big part. That is how. Hang on, yes, bit is set at the end of stack. Yes. So if you look at how. Um, uh, it is in the picture in front of you. The the continuation bit is set until you're done, and then it's uh, uh, it's clear. Well, and that's so, not how you'd normally do end of stack, is it? Normally you do end of stack. They would be zero zero one, wouldn't they? Uh, the, sorry, um, the, what you see in the picture in front of you is Laws way of doing it. I actually do it the other way. It's ah, zero, okay, zero, I'm, with zero, I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm with you. End of discussion. Yeah. I'm with you. Yeah, okay, okay. The, the, that, that's not not a big deal. I can do it's that. It's not a big deal. No. Yeah. Right, but uh, I think I'm, the, I'm also with Kariti about about whether we can't reuse those special purpose labels, uh, re reuse the label space as well to have to have more bits. So, so wait, so, so I understand what you're saying. You talk about having uh, minus the s bit, eleven bits in the first, and then thirty or maybe. 20 more bits. There's 20 spare bits that you could use. You see. Yeah, so a total of 30 bits in the next one, um, minus the S bit and the extension bit. So so you have 10 bits in the first one because the extension bit uh, takes away one bit. Away. Yeah, and then you have 30 in the next one. That. Second? I have, a, I have a question for Kiriati because what I'm doing later down in the document is actually flipping between uh, Actions relying on IST and actions relying on PST. So I need a bit for that also. Oh, oh I mean, all I'm saying, I, I think uh, Stuart is agreeing, is that um, the bits in the second LSE, um, we could use the base special purpose, what today yes. in the diagram is base special purpose label. We can use those 20 bits to have more bits. Um, right. You, now, what the bits mean? Uh, yeah, we're not arguing about that right now. And whether bits come in pairs because they indicate uh, you know two function, two pieces of functionality is to be defined with the bits are defined. Right. Exactly. As, as long as you says uh, we can use it for more bits, then I'm fine because I see a need to use more than the two you're talking about. Yeah, 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 yeah. What, what I think Kariti is saying is that you scrub out base special purpose label TBD and write uh, 20 Fs in it. Yeah. Uh, that's probably okay. So in, right, in, the no, second, I, I, in the second LSE, the first LSE yes. is as is, the second Absolutely. LSE has, um, so then you end up with essentially 40 bits in two label stack uh, entries, uh, yep. 40 useful bits. Right, and, and some of those bits may be pairs or even triplets, depending on the definition of, of, of a bit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so that's why I prefer the term flag, because it could be a multi-bit flag. But yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, that, that's the reason why I have F instead of bit. So I have, yeah. a, I have another question, though, and that's in the first entry, bits 20 to 22. I think they need to be some TTL-friendly number, don't they? 
because you're going to parse this thing, you're going to find one of those without at this point understanding that uh, it's a base special purpose label on the left. And you, you're going to do whatever the router does and tries to prefetch and do. And we've had trouble in the past with um, odd numbers appearing in those bits. So uh, are you talking about the 20 to 22? Yeah, 20 to 22 in LSE 1 or LSE yeah. 0, I suppose. I think they're supposed to be TTL. Uh, that, I mean, that's the TC, not TTL. I beg your pardon, where's the TTL? Oh, yeah, you're, you're right, aren't you? You're right, you're right. Even and, the TC and... possibly needs to be set, doesn't it? What do you do in, um, with the TC bits in uh, entropy label? Oh, we set them to zero. Um, we say that they shouldn't be used. Um, but, but I think, you know, the way I would, before you even think about TC and TTL, you need to understand what the label itself, um, the label value is. So, um, I, you know, one, one of the things that I want to add to the FAI document is to say, look, when you see the base special purpose label, and you see that it's you know not a forwarding label, but it's a special purpose label. You must not interpret TC or TTL. Of course, this is well, going uh, forward. This yeah, is... So, yeah. I mean, the 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 the, the, the trouble is that uh, uh, it's legitimate to make a parser that looks at those three items in parallel. So that's why in, saying, in, in, you know, in any existing, well, yeah. Yeah, no, no, I, I agree with you. So going forward, I mean, the, the, the problem is the following. If you see a base special purpose label you don't understand, you're supposed to drop the packet. It, yes. I mean, if it floats to the top of the stack. Yeah. If it's somewhere else, I mean, you. Uh, right you now, looking at it is a matter of optimization. So yeah. you, you see a base special purpose label at the top of stack, you don't understand it, drop the packet. I mean, it's... it's that's fine. That's, yeah. Um, right, but But... One. But the question but, is, but where going, is the going, going by the forward, stage? I think we should say that if you see a base special purpose label that is this multi action label, then um, you must not interpret. I mean, if you if you want to be able to interpret, let's say we use label nine for this. Mm -hmm. If you want to interpret label nine, you have you must not interpret the TC and TTL fields as usual. So if you do have this, as you said, you know, parser that looks at these things in parallel, you need to turn off the bit, the the parts of the parser that say, look at TC and TTL. Uh, especially T, uh, TC, because um, TC doesn't make sense um, when you're uh, when you're interpreting a label as a special purpose label. Uh, TTL, if you just look at it and say, oh, it's one, I'm going to drop the packet, or it's zero, I'm going to drop the packet. Do uh, we that's think, something you need to turn off, yeah. Do we think this will ever be at the top of stack, for example, due to PHP? Um, I, I think it's useful not to rule that out. Fine, but once you do that, there's a danger that you're going to get some preemptive action. So the question is, should those F bits be there in the first label? Um, uh, but only in the second label, if you see what I mean. So, yeah, which bit? So, 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 yeah, so you run the first label as any other label. The values are indicating what they normally are indicating, and then you start the facts in the second. Yeah. Second label. That, that uh, might be safer with legacy hardware. Well, the thing yeah, the thing that we're saying is that legacy hardware, two things about legacy hardware, or or I wouldn't say legacy hardware, it could even be legacy microcode, depending on how you do this. Yeah. Until you update it, if you see a base special purpose label that you don't understand, you're going to drop the packet. So I, I'm not sure why you're not trying to do... Oh, very oh, special... oh, oh, oh. It, it all depends if there's any parallelization going on, and I don't know, right? I mean, there could be, you could parse that packet as uh, three set four separate actions um, and then figure out what to do afterwards and you've well, got all sorts of sh you could do all that but if at the end of it you're going to drop the packet it hardly matters right because at the point the three parallel or four parallel actions come together you're saying oh this packet is gone bye so 
So there's not much. You uh, th know. That would be if you didn't understand the label. Yes. If you did understand the label, you basically, I would say, tell the parser to not run those actions in parallel. Or if you do, throw them away. Uh, throw yeah, away I think the TT and the TTL action. That's probably yeah. what you have to do. But I do think we need to think, I do think we need to set an open question about bits 20 to 31 in the um, uh, in the final design and, and, and whether, I think we need to ask more of the community whether there is any issue with reusing. Yeah, them. I've al already done that in the FAI document because right. where I propose that, you know, we're going to reuse this, um, there are two statements there. One is that this label should never appear at the top of stack. And two is, you know, what do people do with this today? Um, I have not had any feedback on that. Well, ha hang on a second. We, we've just had a discussion about the first of your two points, and we think it could appear at the top of stack. Well, I think it's useful to say uh, maybe in, in general, um, there are special purpose labels that can appear at the top of stack. Um, there are special purpose labels that were initially only allowed at the bottom of stack, for example, the IPv4 uh, label. Mm -hmm. um, so, I forget what they call it. I, I, have, I have a question. So, so, so you, uh, yeah. Can I, can I ask that question first? So, can we view the uh, 11 bits, that is 20 to 31 minus 1, uh, and keep them as they are in the uh, 3032 uh, specification as a safety safety precaution. How bad would it be not to have them? It would you mean you always it? needed, no matter what you were doing, you always needed to use two labels to do this. Yes, that, uh, that's what's where I did it as I did. So but, uh, the mm -hmm. cost is not that bad that I really. So I think any so, document really needs to needs to document both approaches and discuss the two, and then we should decide with, as I say, m more context. Okay, I right. think I have enough to start working on this and come back with uh, one further step in in this mm -hmm. direction. Stuart, yeah, so, uh, John, yeah, um, in the proposal I had. We kept the uh, first label, the special purpose label, as is. Yep. And then we used the 30 bits in successive labels. Yeah. And the reason I was proposing that was simply that uh, the hardware was dealing uniformly with the, the flag labels. Indeed. And this could be a top label. So, again, it's a, a bit of a safety function as well. Because, you know, in other words, you didn't have to special case the uh uh 11 bits in the first label yeah i i i agree with you because particularly if this became a top label which it could do then you're going to go off to the heavyweight machinery to find out what that special purpose label is in some implementations and only then will you discover this is on some strange queue because of the tc bits so guys we have yeah. a, a choice to make here either we continue on the agenda and uh, believe that I had enough information to write it down uh, one way or another. Uh, or we continue this discussion and scratch the rest of the agenda. Well, that's up to you. Uh, I just wanted to, there, my name is, appears at the bottom, and I just wanted to say that your interpretation was incorrect. I was using two special purpose labels, but one was for hop by hop, and the other was for end to end. Yeah, and I kind of agree with that as well. It was actually your proposal to begin with, Stuart. No, well, no, no. <laughs> my memory is too short. So, so I, I'm not sure I understand that. Um, why would you? I, I'm not against having two special purpose labels, but to to say that the special purpose label is only for hop by hop, and to have another one that's only for end to end seems very restrictive. Well, it's, it allows the two sets of actions to be uh, completely independent. Yeah. 
And uh, it means that the hop by hop guys don't have to bother looking with the end to end label. But it also means the end to, if you've only got an end to end label, you're done. Well, the, the, the problem with that is that you always would need two labels. Uh, well, not always, but no, you if you had one hop by hop action that you want to take and one end-to-end -end action that you want to take, you'd have to put down two labels for that. And if you actually did it where you're not going to use the TC bits, then you actually would have to put down four label stack entries so that yeah, you can sure. encode that, okay. which seems to me just way overkill. Um, whereas if you use a base special purpose label and say, it's got actions and the actions will tell you whether hop by hop or end-to-end, and based on that, you can decide whether you want to go to the bottom of stack or not. And on top of that, we reuse the TC and TTL bits. That, that was actually we, my original proposal, and Stuart convinced me that having them separate was a good idea. However, it's just as easy to use a single special purpose label and just put all of the end end stuff at the at after the hop by hop stuff. Well, again, I. I don't want to confine what the bits, uh, what order they will appear in, because you don't know. I mean, if you define five uh, hop by hop actions, and then you start defining end to end actions, and then you decide, oh, I want another hop by hop action. Where do you put it? If you say that the hop by hop well, has to so come first. So, but but to go back, I think the high order bit is um, a. Do we reuse the TC bits? And I say we absolutely do. It's not just that um, you know you get ten more bits, and so, you know, um, but that you use one label stack entry instead of two. Um, <clears throat> the second thing is because once you define that this has a different action, existing things, you know, you have to take care of how existing things deal with it, and they're supposed to just drop the packet if they don't understand it. And the second thing is. Um, if you want to do separately hop by hop and end to end, you're going to burn label stack entries um, because you have those two that separation. So um, I, think I think we, you know, if we're doing something new and different, we should do something new and different and not be constrained by the past. We should be constrained by the past enough to say bad things would not be done by legacy hardware or legacy microcode. Uh, but uh, in principle, they should just be dropping the packet and then we're done. And so then we should say, okay, let's use the full power that's available to us rather than try to live in this nebulous uh, limbo region between the past and the future. Well, I think the counter argument to that is that optimizing for the number of label stack entries may be a false economy uh, going forward. I really disagree with you, um, and I can tell you, talking to our hardware guys, that that's actually not a false economy. Um, going forward, maybe 10 years from now or five years from now, but today, uh, optimizing the label stacks, um, it's more than just optimizing the label stacks. The point is that you have these bits, you can use them, and if you don't use, I mean, we could we could decide to do everything using extension special purpose labels. Uh, the you know the the point not to you know to I think the point is if we are doing a new uh, design, let's do it right. It's not a matter of optimizing label stack entries. It's a matter of let's do this right. If we've got those 11 bits that we're going to reuse anyway, um, I mean, in the next field, we're going to reuse them for sure. Uh, and the next uh, label stack entry, why not reuse them in the first one? Uh, and we just document, you know, what potential dangers there are and if we have any mitigation for them. If it turns out we, there's something we haven't thought of and there's no mitigation, and fine, we don't use the first entry. So, so there are two separate uh, conversations here. One is, is there any value to separating hop by hop and end to end? I don't see any, but uh, I see a downside. I don't see any, any upside. Um, so there is, and then the second is.
sorry. Um, the, the second is, do we use the TC, TTL bits and the first label stack entry? I think they're two independent questions right. and we should tackle them. I, I think we need to write this down because one of the things that I, I learned over the years is that you make all kinds of assumptions and then people who haven't really been part of the design activity walk up and say, excuse me, but you've forgotten um, that, that you know this class of hardware can't do this or um, um, you've forgotten this so application. I, have done that. I mean, the FAI document has that. And, you know, to the extent that people have read that, uh, I mean, I don't know what I can do besides, you know, walking up to everyone in, in person and saying, read this. Um, it's in the FAI document. Well, um, I mean, I, I, I mean, I suppose there needs to, you know, you know, we need, there needs to be a, a document that's going for last call needs to include some information about um, the trade offs and stuff so that sure. because it's only at that point that a lot of people read this stuff i mean we know how the world works practically well yeah um uh, maybe last call is a bit late um but um, yeah i think you understand but there needs to be a forcing function right well so i guess principle... that adaptive call will be fine so say again greg uh adoption so uh you know, yeah, adoption right. adoption's another good time to do it. So yeah, I, I, before, comment... before we adopt this as a working group document, we get uh, um, you know a bunch of reviews from the MPLS team, um, the you know various yeah teams, yeah yeah so all the groups need to look at it de design review teams yeah. Okay. So um, I had a, a comment about uh, the two labels business, right? So I understand where you're coming from with not wanting it to end up with four labels one alternative approach is that you allow end to end to be encoded amongst hop by hop because a hop by hop one is going to have to look at everything anyway yeah whereas an end to end one you can just discard all that stuff until you are the end right yeah so so what's the proposal well that 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 would be uh you know the proposal Kiriti has, right? Uh, so, so, so Kiriti only. How many labels do you have, Kiriti? Can you remind me? One or two? Right um, now, I have one with the possibility of extension. So it depends on right. the X bit right. whether you have one or two. Right. Uh, in principle, you have more, but um, so, uh, the X bit can keep going. Yeah. So the question Wait, is, Kiriti, is you. One? I think Kiriti answered the wrong wrong question. You, even if you have an X bit, you're just reusing the same label, so you still have just one label. No, no. Uh, I think the question was uh, label stack entries. Uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. If you if you're talking label stack entries, I'm fine. Yeah. So yeah. I was trying to find a compromise between your proposal and um, and the point that John John was making, which is that you don't really want to go pulling all this apart. Um, if you are um, looking for end-to-end -end stuff, to, um, to echo uh, Stuart, yes, and my original proposal is that we have a, a single special label. Or well, if this label exists, it it means there are some extension headers uh, after the label stack, and one more bit is actually. Uh, flag bit is actually used to indicate if there are uh, 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 by hop uh, headers available. You don't necessarily so, have headers, though. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, it's just a concept, base concept. I just use one label. Wherever this label exists, it means there's some actual uh, data. We can call it AD there, but. Uh, uh, if there's extra flag is set, it means there are uh, hop by hop uh, AD, which means uh, every every hop on the path need to examine that. If that bit that flag is uh, cleared, which means okay, there's only probably there's only only end to end um, the AD available. So in this case, we can just use one uh, single label. To um, to provide the both information, I think uh, yeah. that that's just that's reflect what you uh, just mentioned. I had one point on that. Um, 
when you're defining the action, you will define whether it is end to end or hop by hop. Indeed, so you exactly. really don't need a separate indicator. I, I, and of course, there may not be any metadata associated with the action. Correct. Well, that's the other thing. You, when you define the function, you say whether it's hop by hop or end to end. Does it use ancillary data? Yeah. And if it uses ancillary data, what is that data? And is it in stack or post stack? Indeed. Indeed. And all Indeed. of that is a current document, so I'm not sure exactly yeah. where we're going with this conversation. Uh, there is an example, like no further fast reroute, as is an example of a hop by hop um, uh, bit that that has no auxiliary data. There okay. are examples of hop by hop uh, bits that have auxiliary data, and then there, of course, um, the end to end data that. All it says is go look past the end of stack if you want to see this. I think we're where we're going to is becoming comfortable with the design. Good. So um, to your point, Stuart, um, I can push that uh, the segment that discusses um, using the TC bits or not. Um, further you know up in yeah in the document and um suggest uh you know as an alternative that we could use this, the first uh, if you're willing to go with a minimum of two labels then the base special purpose label can have tc bits and and ttl bits that uh, are uh, interpreted in a standard way mm. and then everything goes to the next uh, label yeah um as an alternative and then you know keep that sort of uh, high up in the document assuming that people have this uh, tendency to read the first the front part and then drop off but oh. <laughs> I, I would say that this is something that we have to flag for the the different reviews before we make any of the documents um working group documents so not even last call well before that the adoption call for making a working group document, we should say, hey, by the way, look at this uh, and, and um, you know. I'm not, I'm not sure I agree with you about it gating. I mean, the, the point about working group documents is just that the change control is handed to a different group of people. Well, no, no, not gating. Um, I, 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 what I want people to do is to be aware of this earlier rather than you know yes. getting to last call and that's oh what right okay yeah, yeah 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 i i kind of agree with that but we, we can still go to adoption with this yes. um with this design decision um pending um right, right, in order right. to get it thoroughly discussed and thoroughly reviewed yeah yeah Because it's in the class of you know what's a what what what's a trivial sort of toss of the coin decision at this stage, and later on, I just want to make sure we don't regret the particular toss of the coin we took. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, Noah, do you want to still add uh, anything on this uh, wiki uh, before we um, move back to the agenda? I don't think it's. No, I don't well, this want, wiki needs to be updated to reflect our discussion, doesn't it? Yes, that's that's uh, what I need to say. I will try to write it up over the next coming two weeks, probably faster if I correct it at the time. And then uh, we also need to consider a split between what goes into the framework and what actually stays in the uh, uh, specification that's. Because if we don't start doing things that really are generic in one of the specification drafts, we're probably not doing us ourselves a service. But I think this is a huge part of actually get need to go into the into the framework. Uh, what content from you know the discussions we had goes into framework um, to me it was like more of a solution proposal uh, 
you know, what we were discussing is uh, closer to a solution proposal. Um, so, yeah, you would want to single out what goes into framework. I, I don't think anyone has an answer to that just now, but uh, yeah. there are things that we need to have in the framework that is kind of generic for the uh, entire area. And there are things that are specific for a specific proposal and that should go into the specification draft. Yeah. And that will change over time. Uh, I think in both directions until we have this settle on the document structure. Okay, are you done on this? I think so. Uh, I have what I have enough to kind of restart. So, uh, Loa, if you need any help um, editing this uh, section, I can I can pitch in. Okay, fine. Uh, I think I will lean on uh, uh, Stuart a bit also, and possibly also on uh, on Matthew. Sure. Yeah. I mean, it's a wiki, so everyone can edit. Everyone you know, can. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, I will prompt you to comment on what's there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, maybe we could just set up a communal editing session or something or other. That's usually a very efficient way of of, of doing these complex problems. Uh, I would like to do one more yeah. iteration before we do that. Sure. Okay. Okay. Um, let's go back to the agenda then. Uh, um, the next item I have after this was the use case document. So um, uh, can I jump in with a quick thing? Um, in the primer documents below, um, one one that's missing is Jeffrey Zhang's document. So I, you know, I think we need to update that list. Um, not that we're going to discuss it this time around. We don't have time, but I just want to make sure that we don't miss that. Send yeah. me the document name and I add it directly. Yeah, I agree. Uh, it was uh, early on presented. I agree with you, uh, uh, Kriti. I did not look at the exa exhaustive uh, list. Uh, so, 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 so uh, there's some confusion here between the primer document at the top and this list. Yeah, the, uh, the, the, that list name should be probably changed, but. Yes. Um, have a better name or maybe these just are, relevant these documents oh well, these are pro these are proposals aren't they some of them are yeah proposals uh, not really all of them but some of them but uh, relevant is probably a good thing yeah, relevant is nice and generic okay yep uh okay um, okay did you want to add um, anything more kiriti on this uh, I will I will edit this and add Jeffrey's um, oh, yeah. um, document, but that that's it. Yeah. Oh. Okay. So I'm going back to this item here, and um, I was uh, you know preparing to say that we will publish the zero zero revision uh, soon. I had shared uh, yeah, an update with uh, multiple of the working uh, of the Open Design team. Uh, uh, so once the zero zero version is, in fact, it is on our GitHub. Uh, it's publicly available. Uh, the 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 write up, the rough draft. So uh, feel free to comment and read through it. Um, I'll leave. Uh, I think it's right there. Uh, the link is there, so it can take us to the to the document. Mm, interesting. No. No, it should take us to GitHub account. Um, yeah, I'll I'll put the the right uh, URL here and uh, expect that to see this published uh, the zero zero version soon. Uh, there was a comment on the file name. Um, the file name as is has a DT next uh, embedded in it. Um, I noticed that uh, we are not 
following this and the other documents. Uh, personally, I don't mind, you know, ODT or open design team or design team to be embedded in the, uh, in those documents. Is there any reservation on this? Yes, because it causes quite a bit of confusion of people that is not up to speed. If you want to put the design team in, you should put it as MPLS dash ODT. Oh, yeah. Uh, 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 it can't be draft MPLS anything. It has to be draft something MPLS because that's the way the sorting algorithm works. Yeah, that's exactly right. The name comes before MPLS, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I so, yeah. so put draft sad MPLS dash DT or ODT. Uh, you can't draft what, MPLS anything. You've got to, it's got to be draft. It might be draft MOTT or something. Uh, or I'm saying that. I'm, what I'm yeah. saying is put draft dash sad dash MPLS dash ODT. I don't mind doing that. Sure, I can do that. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I, my point oh, was for uh, the other documents, sorry to interrupt, uh, Stuart, uh, because they're being pro produced by the, you know, uh, well, well, why don't you just put your name down in the, in there like, uh, like we normally do and okay. um, people will work out that it's and yeah, that's an, another option. The reason why, because I, I know other design team are using this approach. So right. they are, you know, I, I take an example, the network slicing design team had NSDT embedded, but, but I'm, I'm fine to put my name, uh, if, if you don't like that approach. Yeah. Um, if you see the bottom, the, uh, the, the bottom of the page as it is now. The, the draft uh, for the first nibble that I put, uh, now you moved it, but okay. Yeah, um, which one? Yeah, uh, it, it's KBBMA, MPLS first nibble. Uh, oh, and yeah. so I just put down the initials of yes. the people that had con that were listed in the authors. Okay, <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Okay. So uh, that's, uh, kind of, that, that's kind of what we done before, but uh, it just, uh, Cover those five people as individuals. But well, the, the point that this is not, and uh, you know, necessarily approved by the entire design team. Um, I, I exactly. mean, maybe we could, you know, we could change all of them to be D, you know, uh, DT or MODT or whatever. <clears throat> but um, this, is, this is a chairs discuss chairs decision. Let the chairs go and the MPLS chairs can have a yeah, discussion. Yeah. Tell okay. us what to do. So do I what I say. Really cares. Well, I do what your your collective says. Yeah. And I'm not saying that because I want to be part of the discussion or anything. Um, you, you just um, it's an administrative thing. Just decide what's best. I think that's fine. I I will um I will not waste much more time on that. Uh, I I'm I'm okay to progress on this. Um. Uh. Let me move on to the next item uh, in the interest of time. The proposals, uh, we, we have a proposal uh, that was discussed a little earlier uh, about uh, flags and so on. It's coming from John Drake. Uh, it, it, Loa had put a comment, we need this in a draft. I have a reservation on this. Um, I was silent during the discussion. When John put out the proposal, he said that uh, he's basing his uh, whatever draft he's put out is, is basing it on the work that was done by Kriti and, and others in his draft, in Kriti's draft. So do we need a competing uh, draft? Because this is hinting that we need another draft and I'm not sure we need another draft. Uh, that's not what we say. We're saying we need to put this stuff into an ID. If yeah. Kiriat is willing to take it into his, uh, the, 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 his ID, that's fine. But we can't progress it if it's not an ID. So the question, the question is, I mean, I'm, I'm willing to do that, but I think we had a discussion that said, <clears throat> that, you know, having a separate label, a special purpose label, 
for end-to-end -end versus one for hop by hop um, doesn't make that much sense. So I'm not sure what aspect of this proposal should be put into this uh, into the document. Um, to be precise, I don't. I think you had said that having them separate didn't make much sense. I don't know that there was consensus on that. Okay. Um, but more particularly, the major part of my proposal is figuring out the details of how this is supposed to work in an environment in which not everybody supports all of the defined network actions. And as I think I had told you previously, uh, that material uh, could sensibly belong in your draft. Okay, um, I will look at it again and and um, see. I think the 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 part where, um, like I said earlier in the call, um, I am writing a document that advertises in the IGP, uh, although that's not the only way to do it. Uh, what the capabilities of each router is with, with respect to the special purpose label and what flag bits they support. So given that's, that- that's, uh, that's fine, but that's, unless you, you, you want to be able to send a packet through a node that understands network actions in general, but does not necessarily understand all of the ones that are currently defined. Right, which is, um, so if you let me finish, um, if you have, um, if you know the capability of each node because they're advertising what they can do in the IGP, you can compute a path whereby um, the particular set of actions that you've defined in that packet <clears throat> are understood by everyone uh, along the path, or if they're not understood by someone, it doesn't matter because you're, you've accounted for that. The point is that that would take care of the fact that you do not send the packet uh, through a node that needs to process it, but cannot. Oh, that's interesting, but it's sometimes uh, required to, to traverse a legacy node, no? Right. Yes, in in which case you should be okay with it traversing the legacy node without being processed by the legacy node. So, for example, if the legacy node, if if this particular action was, hey, I have a network slice identifier for you, and that legacy node didn't uh, know how to process that, then um, you should be okay with the fact that your SLA may be breached because that particular legacy node is not going to necessarily treat the packet the way you want. So, so, but the point, the point, I think the the high order bit here is, um, we should not be sending, uh, to the extent possible, we should not be sending these uh, uh, special purpose labels through nodes that do not how do not know how to process it, unless we're okay with the fact that they do not know how to process it. We actually talked about that. It's, um, so, so um, the the way I would say it is, I will write this uh, this document. I will write the corresponding text in the FAI document, and in writing the corresponding text on how to you know send uh, things, uh, how a legacy network or a network that contains legacy nodes deals with this new thing. Um, in writing that up, I will look at John's uh, document uh, or, or uh, the wiki page uh, and see what um, what it makes sense to adopt. The other piece of it is uh, actually describing uh, a given packet that does not necessarily have all of the currently defined network actions set. It's, in other words, a given packet is only going to have a subset of the defined network actions uh, set. Sure. And so there also is text which talks about how you uh, how the ancillary instack data is set uh, corresponding to the flags that are set. 
so the current the FAI document tells you exactly how to parse and find out based on the flags that are set which ancillary data, especially the in stack, the post stack, you know, is left for after the bottom of stack. But the in stack data it says this is exactly how you know what data there is and how to parse it. So maybe you could take a look at that, and then. Okay. Uh, well, I didn't see it in the in the first version, so okay, that's fine. Yeah, it's in uh, the O1 version. So to to uh, Loa's high order point, um, what I'm going to do is uh, produce, um, you know, by by the next meeting, I'll produce an O2 version of the FAI document. <laughs> and um, some of the discussion we have had today, I will uh, put into that, especially the one that we had with uh, Stuart and John uh, in terms of. Um, uh, you know, do we use the TC bits or not? Do we, uh, you know, what are the design decisions around that? Um, and and then some of these other ones, I think once um, I have the document uh, on IGP advertisement, um, we can come back to this and see what elements of uh, John's proposal we pull into this document. And there is, a, there is another, piece, which I think also needs to be specified. Uh, Matthew and Stuart were talking about the fact that a given network action either needs to be processed by everybody or it needs to be processed by select nodes. And so we need to describe if it needs to be processed by particular nodes, then we have to describe how those nodes are included and identified. Yeah, that's a that's a level I didn't want to get to. I think that would make um, this a whole lot more complicated. Oh. And um, so, the the thing that we have today is uh, very simplistic, uh, potentially. Um, either everyone has to do it, so um, well, not has to do it. <clears throat> either everyone should should be looking at it, in which case you have the hop by hop, or only the egress should look at it. In which case you have the end to end. If you say I want a subset of nodes to deal with this, um, I'm not sure that you know, we can do that efficiently in the label stack. No, yeah, I agree. I think I'm going to agree with you. Um, uh, th there are two ways of specifying that only some nodes are to do it, aren't there? You either do it using the segment routing method, which will be a way of doing it. Or we, uh, I would take a lot of stack, or um, you put some information in the stack, which would be horrible. Yeah. Or you put the information in the ancillary data itself. So you would say, this is a hop by hop action. And when you get to go and look at the action, it says, oh, this is only to be done by nodes five, seven, and nine. Um, right. We... Except the five, seven, and nine, the, 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 just identifying the nodes, we typically do that with a four byte at least uh, word. And yeah, yeah. So However, we do it. the data that would that blow up. The, the... Uh, I, I want to point out that uh, we had the similar problem uh, with the residence time measurement. Yeah. And uh, we solved it by using TTL. I was just going to go there. You could put some <laughs> TTL values to process to to process to that. Yeah. Bit, bit, bit risky, but you could do it. Yes, so yeah. uh, it, it might be it might be not uh, for all possible uh, use cases, but in some cases that what might be used. Yeah, technique. Yeah, that's only eight bits per 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 node. Yeah, but it basically you you discover your uh, capability and then you uh, have to have a state. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 So we, we did talk about the path uh, being segmented uh, and then a set of actions applicable to segment one, another set to segment two and and so on. And uh, we we talked about the uh, FAI being repeated uh, in the yep. same label stack. And then we thought, uh, you know, uh, especially with ancillary data post stack, uh, we could do multiple label stacks. Uh, 
yeah uh to do that so i if you remember Stuart, that ah, uh, uh, but that's to do with the context of that data and who is to consume it yeah the idea is the segment one consumes uh ancillary data one uh segment two has another ancillary data um uh, that pops out after segment one is finished with its work and so on so this way you can apply certain number of actions so like segment one and another set on segment two and so on no 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 i think i think, think the difference here is that if you put it in the stack it gets consumed and destroyed when it gets to a certain point in the along its path yes that's if true. you want it to be there end to end but only executed on certain nodes say for example ioem then you'd have to have some way of specifying which nodes it were, were to do it and that information probably needs to go in the ancillary data block itself yes and right. and the idea that um if you do want to consume the data you could do that either by repeating the fai or you could do that yeah by having multiple label stacks. I think those uh, right now, sort of the more natural thing would be to repeat the FAI and to Stuart's point, <clears throat> the thing that you want to remain, uh, the longer you want it to remain, the further down in the stack you put it, but, yep. uh, but you can keep it high up in the stack and understand that it'll get consumed, but <clears throat> yep. there's a piece later that will, will keep it for longer. Uh, so I think we have several things in our, uh, you know, several tools we can deal with this. <clears throat> but I think it's also useful to, at least for now, I mean, if you look at IPv6, they basically say there's end-to-end -end options and the hop-by-hop -hop options. And let's start with that. Let's get that to a place where we're comfortable, keeping in mind that maybe at some future point, we want to have only a subset of the nodes. So it's sort of a, yeah. in between end-to-end -end and hop-by-hop. But uh, let's maybe not obsess on that right now. No, I, I'm not sure that IPv6 is the greatest model considering. <laughs> <laughs> well, from the point of view of um, let's get, you know, let's get this to a place where we're all happy with. Yes. Yeah. Um, and and then and then fine tune the design yeah, to yeah. have a subset, um, and and figure out what a good way of doing the subset is. Right. So this was a great discussion. Um, let me just highlight we are over time and yeah, yeah. I, I do want to stop the recording. Um, any last words before I stop the recording? I just one more point uh, to the uh, question if John needs to put this in an ID or not. Um, I'm not saying that he does, but if he doesn't put it in an ID, and he and Kiriati can't agree on what actually goes in to the joint document, uh, then we will probably lose some of the uh, information that is on the wiki page just now. Tread carefully well, I don't think we'll lose anything. I think we're going to have the discussion. Um, and. Um, like I said, there are some some additional factors here um, that, for example, having uh, an IGP uh, distribute this information so you stay away from nodes that you don't want uh, processing uh, the the stack or, or the FAI label or whatever the uh, the label that the special purpose label so i think once we have that then it makes sense to come back to the discussion the fact that it i mean there's a there's always discussions um on the mailing list on on many ways that um not every discussion has to turn into an id uh, so I, I i don't agree that we will lose it because of that uh, i do agree that once we we come back to this, we have to decide um, whether to, you know, whether to take, adopt that uh, text and in what form to adopt the text. So I'm still saying if John still have text that he thinks is critical when you have merged into one document, that text need to go into uh, an ID. 
Otherwise, we won't get the uh, correct processing of it. And I don't think it's an, uh, uh, could be an adapted article because uh, we can't give one I, I ID a, uh, a control of what they actually we do, do with to with the uh, work group adoption and work group last call. Um, you know, if he wants to produce an ID, there's nothing stopping him. So I, I don't understand what the discussion is about. Um, uh, I, I think the statement that you made that if we don't have this as an ID, we can't progress it is false. Um, we have working group discussions um, all the time without creating IDs with every single comment. Um, I think the other side of it that one ID is trying to control anything is also false because anyone with an email can write an ID. Uh, so I, I, I'm very confused about this discussion. If John wants to write an ID, I, I think you're saying the same thing. I mean, I, I hear that uh, um, Loa is asking um, for discussions, uh, you know, to, to happen with with uh, with you, Kriti, and the authors of that draft. And if if a conclusion comes that we incorporate uh, the text into the draft, he's he's going to be happy. If not, and we you know we cannot agree, and John still wants to pursue, then. He can consider a separate ID, but I'm, you know, I'm not, I'm skeptical about that. Uh, otherwise, yeah, that's how I understand it. So you, you I, I don't you're see contradictory what you're saying. So since you're saying discussions will happen, so you are saying discussions will happen, right? Yes. Uh, if you're talking to me, yeah, we, we've already had John and I had a discussion. We had a discussion earlier today. Uh, the discussions will happen. I think we don't have the full context right now because um, some of the mechanisms that I've been thinking about haven't been published yet. But yeah, the discussions will always continue. And, um, <clears throat> you know, if at, at some point we reach an impasse where we don't agree, that's where working group consensus can happen or you can produce a second ID and then we can have the discussion that way. But uh, the fact, I mean, that statement that we cannot progress this if we don't have an ID is false. But if, if uh, A, if Loa insists that there be an ID, fine. If John wants to have an ID, fine. I mean, I. There is no I'm not control doing, anyway. I'm not doing it. You, you must stop. You're kind of misrepresenting what I'm saying. I'm saying when you had your discussion with John, and John still thinks there are stuff that was in his wiki page currently that actually needs to be discussed in the working group, then he needs to produce his ID for that. Um, why does he need to produce an ID? He can't send an because email to the working work. group? He can send an email to the working group, but then he needs to have an uh, intended action also. Is this a useful discussion for the entire team? No. Yeah. I I I, I would like to stop the recording now, if uh, if possible, as well. Okay. I will go ahead and stop. It's. Uh...